I'm so glad to welcome Justin and Kaylee Poule to the Intimate Marriage Podcast. And as part of my welcome, I want to share why it is that I've invited you to be on the podcast. This is my very first conversation with Kaylee, and I'm so glad you're here. And it's my second conversation with Justin. However, I heard you, Justin, speaking a lot when we were in very beautiful weather at a clients and community event in Scottsdale, and you were talking about the intense snowstorm happening back at home where Kaylee, I don't know how many inches of snow you were needing to navigate by yourself oh. and you're, what'd you snow. say? So lots there's of snow. Lots. lots of snow. Okay. And children and the dog, and you were managing that single-handedly when you're married to a man who obviously would be extremely helpful in that kind of situation, except he was far, far away in sunny weather. And Justin, you described some of the things that you did to support your wife from a distance. And I just thought, okay, I really want to talk to the two of you and let other people learn from how you've created such a nourishing, mutually beneficial relationship, especially while your children are young, which as you both know, can be such a challenging time for a couple. So that was a rather long introduction, but I wanted to set the context and say a really warm hello to each of you. Hi, thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. Excited <laughs> to uh, dive in and see if we can provide value to, uh, to your audience with some of the things that we do that are normal to us. How about if you describe what you did before leaving town? I want to set the scene for some of the things that are normal for the two of you. And then we can talk about how you think about it and how you came to it. But I just thought it was so beautiful. So will you share, Justin? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so for context, every three months or so, I fly out to Scottsdale for a week and uh, we put on an event for our clients at Clients and Community. And it seems that every time I go out there, it lines up that there's a massive snowstorm that happens while I'm gone. And she can vouch that it every seemed time. to happen every time. Uh, and I feel bad. Obviously, she's taking care of the house. She's dealing with the snowstorm, the children, the dog, the homework, the, the dinners, everything. She's in charge of everything while I'm gone. And she fully supports what I do. And it's incredible. Um, and I know that while I'm gone, it's difficult. There's no, there's no getting around it. It's a difficult time. So I asked myself prior to leaving, what can I do to kind of alleviate some of the pressure, some of those difficult times that she's inevitably going to face while I'm away to make that time easier on her? So for me, it all boils down to intentionality. So before I left, what I did is I took my whiteboard marker and I just went around the house and I left little messages on all the mirrors, on the whiteboard in my office, everywhere in the house, just basically reminding her how much I love her, how beautiful I think I am, how much I appreciate what she does uh, for, for me, our children, everything. Um, and then basically the, the morning after I'm already gone and on the plane off to Scottsdale, she gets up to do her workout and all these little messages as she comes down the stairs to go into her home gym, she sees all of those things. And she sent me a message saying like, I saw all your messages. You're amazing. Thank you so much. I miss you. I love you. And you're going to crush it this week in Scottsdale. So those are just, it's just a little, little thing that I was able to do that just changes the whole, you know, the perspective on how difficult it is when I'm away when I, I can create those emotions for her. Yeah. And I have to say, hearing that, I had a lot of thoughts about it. Yes. On the one hand, Justin, you're amazing. You're thoughtful. You didn't just have the idea. You actually took action and you spent some time to figure out what would actually serve in this situation. But I also had the thought, Kaylee, not every woman would be able to open and receive expressions of love in every room of the house. Like, I don't know if this seems very straightforward, or if you've always been this way, but for many women, that much attention, even when it's given by someone who's not on the premises, it's kind of a lot to take in. And the way you spoke about it, Justin, I didn't have any impression that you wondered if it was going to be overwhelming for your wife. And I'm guessing it wasn't, Kaylee, right? 
No, not at all. I loved it. I saw it and I was like, oh, like that, that's like the cutest thing ever. I loved it. I think it's still on my on one of the mirrors downstairs. That's so great. Was it, have you always been that way that when someone expresses love or gives you a compliment, you know exactly how to receive it so it's nourishing for you and it's a lovely experience for the person giving it to you? I think it depends on who it is that's giving it to me. Like we've been together for going on 11 years. So it was just, it was, it was okay. I'm okay with like Justin doing it. Right. Because like we've kind of grown together as a couple, but always like compliments and stuff. I kind of like, oh, okay, thanks. Like I'll shove it off. But with Justin, it's different. But no, I okay. know what you mean. Yeah. Has it always been different or is that something you needed to learn and develop in yourself? I definitely needed to like learn it and develop it while being with Justin. Cause he's very, like you said, he's very intentional. So he would like, whenever we first started dating, he would do stuff and I'd be like, okay, like that's a little much kind of thing. But then, yeah. you know, like it would just, like he'd send me flowers at work and be like, guess who? And I was like, oh, okay. Like, I know it's you, but <laughs> <laughs> so it, I had to learn it with Justin. So like, it depends on who it is, but yeah. I okay. Well, I love that you're sharing that. Is there any particular moment that was especially meaningful in learning it? Did you just make it happen or uh, like I think just, any guidance for other women? Because this definitely comes up that it's hard to take all that loving attention, even if though, if it's withdrawn, we get resentful and pissy. But meanwhile, when it's given, it can be complicated to open and receive it. No, I think it was just I don't know, like it just happened, like over time, like living together, like we moved pretty fast. Like we were living together. We we're like six months in a relationship. So I had like no choice, but to accept it. Right. I couldn't just keep telling him to never mind, not do it. Like, oh, that's weird. That's kind of forward. But I just, I just accepted it. Actually, Kaylee, hearing you say that, I have the feeling that you love Justin for who he is and Justin, you express yourself this way. So you didn't say it this way, but what I'm hearing and what you said is that part of learning to love Justin includes learning to receive these expressions of love. I don't know if that sounds too theoretical to you, but that's what I feel from how you're saying it. Yeah, no, for sure. It was like a, a natural acclamation to Justin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Well, yeah, I'm definitely a guy who, who wears my heart on my sleeve. And uh, yeah, I just like to, to let people know whenever I appreciate them that I appreciate them. You know, sometimes those little things that are left unsaid, there's a lot of impact that's not happening when those things are left unsaid. So I make sure I voice them and display them in different ways. You just you could write a book with those potent sentences. So I just want to like underline them and let them stand for themselves. That is so true that things are unspoken and it makes a difference. I'd like to pivot because how old are your children? Six and four. Six and four. Okay. So I have a lot of couples reach out to me when their children are six and four, seven, eight, nine, but basically when the youngest one is about four, because no one's in diapers anymore. For the most part, children are sleeping through the night. We don't have any illusion that that's 100% of the time, but you know, for the most part, the nights are easier. You're able like this evening to put the children to bed and be available to do a podcast interview, which I so appreciate. But the next, challenge happens where there's there's more time, there's more space to connect, but dinner times in particular can be super hectic. And when, when you wanna be together, but the children need something, and yes, it's not like when they need a diaper changed or something like that, but this stage has its own flavor. How do the two of you prioritize both your marriage and your family life? That is a very good, good question. <laughs> very good question. Um, so we, our children are at the stage, they're sleeping their nights um, and they're, they're like, they're little contributors. You know, we've raised them to be like contributing members in society. That's our aim for them is to have a beautiful life, create, you know, impact on others. So we've really raised them to be contributors where whenever we're in our family dynamic, 
they're they're actually more of like a contributing factor than a needing factor, if that makes sense. For example, after dinner, our six-year-old, instead of being like, I'm done and pushing her plate towards us, she'll just independently get up, walk to the sink, rinse her dish, put it in the dishwasher. And like, so it, they actually, they help with the, the family dynamic. But for us, um, whenever they go to bed, that's where we really like rekindle. We have like, you know, our little guilty pleasure. We'll throw on a, a show that we're watching together. And then it gives us something to talk about. Uh, not every night, but there are some nights where we'll go up to bed and we'll read. There are the nights where we'll just sit and talk. We, we have this board game called Catan. She loves to play Catan. We'll play Catan. Um, th that really is like our time. And we are a couple, even though we're parents, we still believe in needing to intentionally keep the connection going between us. So we do weekend getaways, just the two of us. We have been on trips, just the two of us. We've been on trips with the children, but also the two of us just to like, remember who we are as individuals and a couple. And we're not always just mom and dad. A lot, I find a lot of people that we're surrounded by, they fall into that where the, the identity of who they are goes to just mom and dad, mom and dad. That's, that's the only, that's who they are. And they, they're like, us is on the side until the, I believe that there's a world where it could be a parallel where you can have the children and play the role of father when it requires it to be, but also to play the role of loving, caring husband as well. That doesn't need to be put aside. And I find that's what a, a lot of times happens. Yeah. Anything to add to that? No, you said it perfectly. <laughs> Okay. I really love that. I'm absolutely a fan of the same thing. And I usually call it discrete eroticism because there was a very distinct dinner that I remember. It was kind of a light bulb moment for me where I was sitting at the dinner table with my husband and we have four children and I just, and all four of them were born at this time. And I just realized at the dinner table, I either orient to him as a co-parent or I basically ignore him because he can manage fine on his own and the children, you know, it's just a different matter of engaging with them and making sure they have food on their plate and that sort of thing. And when I realized that, I was like, that is not how I want to be. I don't want to just feel like a wife or a lover in very particular hours when everyone's in bed and no, everyone has gotten enough sleep that, I mean, you know, he and I have gotten enough sleep that we can be awake and with one another. I want it to be a, not 24 seven necessarily, but all of our waking hours that we have that channel flowing, even if we are the only two who know it, thus discreet eroticism rather than regular old overt eroticism. <laughs> so I really love how you've articulated that because it absolutely is true. Not only do most couples not do that, I think for many, it feels like a kind of a taboo to prioritize a marriage so much while the children are young. Is that anything that either of you needed to navigate in terms of a restricting mindset? I think maybe at the beginning, like when we had our first daughter, we were kind of like caught between both, right? Like what to do kind of like, I want to spend time with you, but I want to be with my baby as well. So I think at the beginning, but we've gotten a flow. It kind of just worked at it together. Yeah. I think, I think more so her, like I, I said in the beginning, I'm very intentional and I very intentionally did not want to lose who we are as a couple. Um, so it, like every time we go away on a weekend or like on a trip, it is my idea where it's like, let's you and I go and like be us as a couple for a couple of days um, and honestly, I think it's healthy. I think it's healthy to have those, those like disconnections, um, from the children. Reason being number one is typically, um, it allows quality time between the children and her parents or my parents. They're like our, our usual babysitters. So it allows them to, to have quality time together to deepen that bond, create memories. And for us, Yes, like the second that we drop them off and we're off to go and have that fun adventure, yes, we're feeling that emotion of missing them. Um, and it carries through the whole time that we're away from them. And I find what it does is whenever you return to your normal daily, everyday life, there's more appreciation 
for that normal chaotic everyday life than if you were never to have that that like short but powerful disconnect that is so beautiful how you say that because the getting away it's not just because you as a couple need it and it's not because you need a break from the children you're saying something actually very different which is that it it stokes the stokes the attention stokes the emotional bond i think that's so beautiful it's a pattern interrupt almost there's so many people they just there's so many people they're like a plastic bag in the wind they just let life happen to them and they just go in the motions and i refuse to be that way i'm very like i said i i i want to create moments and i want to create things and emotions for myself my family and yeah those those disconnects allows for a pattern interrupt to happen where instead of just, you know, living through life the way it is, every day is the same. Just that disconnect creates, it creates that appreciation for the everyday life that you get to have there. It's, it just gives that new, fresh perspective on, wow, I miss this normal every day that I have. So yeah, it's like a little bit of a pattern interrupt. Okay. I have a question that I'm guessing listeners are going to have. And as I've already established, I don't really know the two of you and I have no idea what you'll say to this. So I think there are many loving, devoted husbands who might hear you speak, Justin, and hear your responsiveness, Kaylee, and say, how can I do this with my wife? She's so clear. She's just too exhausted. She just doesn't want to leave the children. It, like, she's touched out, not, not when the children are four and six, but whatever, like how, how did you, basically, how did you lead Justin? Like, that's really what the question is. Like, how did you have this intentionality in a way that your wife is glad to participate in? Oh, that's a very good question. <laughs> I think I think it's important for context that what I do for a living, my career is around creating experiences for our clients and our company. And I think there's definitely some spillover of things that I've learned and implemented and built in our company into my personal life, into our relationships, and just knowing the importance of creating elevated moments. Okay, well, I respect the humility in your answer, meaning that you have a relevant professional skill set. But from my professional position, that is only a small part of this answer. Yes. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. But there's, there's a lot of things in life I find are awareness. So for example, if you're a husband right now and the the dialogue that happens on a frequent basis from your wife is, oh, I'm zonked. Oh, the children. Oh, and, and it, it's always revolving around that. That's an awareness. Like your awareness needs to kick in and say, okay, there's something that's happening here. It does have a negative intonation to it of being exhausted. The kids weren't listening. At the end of the day, it's just like, oh my God, I'm a mess. It's like being able to pick up on that, having the awareness and then asking yourself, what can I do intentionally to, I don't want to say correct, but what can I do to improve or again, create that pattern interrupt, right? So those little little things that can, Again, the, the little note that I left in the mirror, the saying, you know what? You do work hard as a mother. Sometimes the children can create chaos. They, I think they all do. Okay. Um, I know that's that you're part of being a contributor too. Yeah. So it's like, how about you, I'll book a spa day for her, have her nails done, whatever, something that she likes. It doesn't necessarily need to be that. Maybe she loves to play tennis and she hasn't played in years because she's always busy. It's like arrange something to catch her off guard and create like that, that pattern interrupt of like my every day is I get up and I take care of the, the children and I'm exhausted at the end of the day, create a day that is not that for her intentionally. So like, just like, a, it takes a little bit of effort. It's really, it's not a lot, but the result for her of like just having that day to relax, unwind. And again, I bet you, while she's having that day unwinding and relaxing, she's missing the normal chaos of her day. And the very next day when she's back to doing it, she has a newfound appreciation for it because she actually missed it the day before. So it's really- Honestly, I think 
that happens when you catch it soon enough. So I love your conviction about that, but I'm sure that that's related to you catching it soon enough, because if someone hasn't had a day like that for five years, let's just say, one day actually isn't enough to return with that kind of readiness and enthusiasm. Do you agree, Kaylee, you're nodding? And I agree. Yeah. I, again, I think there's another piece of it, which is the open communication as a couple. Yeah. Uh, we excel in that area. We have really great communication. Um, so if it's if it's something that your wife is voicing, you have an advantage because it's like, okay, well, let's talk about that. You know, you're yeah. you're exhausted today. What was the day like? What what can we do as a family unit to kind of help with that exhaustion for you at the end of the day? The other one that's with the, which is a little bit at a disadvantage is if you have a wife that is not voicing those things. There, you kind of got to put on that like observer hat and kind of pick up on, you know, the behaviors, the patterns. Every day she's exhausted. At the end of the day, she can't even make it through, you know, half an hour after the children are in bed. She's, you know, she's falling asleep. Those are all indicators of like, hey, maybe she's absolutely wiped by what's going on. And then having the ability to open up that communication channel, I think is very important as well. Um, and then just saying like, here, here's what I've observed. Um, you know, I really appreciate the way that you show up as a wife, as a mother, the house is always, you know, well taken care of the children. We do it together, but it just looks like you're really tired at the end of every day. And I want to like help if you'll allow me to help with that. Like, what can we do to alleviate some of the pressure that I I can sense that you're feeling. I love that so much. One of the things that you wrote to me, Justin, is I'm beyond thankful for her, her support and how she shows up as a mother and wife. And it's so clear that that is not just some cherry on top or some, I don't know, bow that you tie around the package. It's like that is part of the oxygen you breathe every day. It's, it's just wonderful to hear it. And the other thing that I was thinking is so often there's such a challenge when a husband brings his problem solving attitude to these kinds of dynamics, but somehow you've elevated your skills with problem solving so that they actually serve the situation very well. It's, it's really, um, I think you could write a manual about that because it's, it's taking this very masculine skill, but applying it in a way that smoothly serves the couple. It's, it's really wonderful to, to witness. You're smiling too, Kaylee. What are you thinking? No, I think like what he said, especially with like being intentional with gifts or like showing them with like a spa day or something. It kind of has, you kind of have to have it already planned for her though. Like Justin would have it planned for me. Like, okay, so here you're going to the spa. The girls are going to my parents, right? So you have no reason to say no, and you kind of have to do it. So it kind of gets you out of, like, you have no choice. Because As opposed to, I got you a gift certificate, pick a day and figure out the child exactly. care. Or yeah. you don't even say figure out the child care, but you Kaylee know that's a part of making this happen. So it's more like have it planned and then she's got no choice. Like she has to go. Cause if she says no, then like, you know what okay. I mean? <laughs> that's so wonderful. So one question that I ask all guests that I interview is based on my conviction that marriage intimate relationship is the ultimate vehicle for personal growth. So I would love to ask you first, Kaylee, what have you learned about yourself as a result of being married to Justin? Oh my God, so much. Um, yeah, I guess he kind of, he, like he challenges me. Like, right, like at the beginning, we were just like, whatever, like kind of just going with emotions. And then he started more into like his mental wellness and reading these books. And I'd be looking at him like, okay, whatever. I'm just going to watch TV. But then I saw him doing it and then he was all happy. And I'm like, oh, I want that. So he's like constantly, he was constantly challenging me. So I kind of just embrace it. And it's yeah. beautiful. 
Okay. What about you, Justin? What have you learned about yourself as a result of being married to Kaylee? He's patient. Uh, definitely, definitely, um, communication, but communication has drastically improved throughout our relationship. And honestly, I think that there's a one pivotal moment that Kaylee created that had she not done that years ago, we would not be living this incredible life that we get to live right now. Um, we live in our dream house. We have two acres We're out in the country. Our neighbors are horses. We're doing really well financially. We have beautiful, healthy children. And a lot of the life that we've been able to build boils down to one moment. Um, this was back in 2017. I was getting involved in like affiliate marketing and I actually found out the real cost. You know, it was like $97 a month and you will, and it was like 97. Okay. I can do this. And then I actually found out the cost. Uh, it was like a, a five figure plus investment to actually get into this and make like the real money. And for me, whenever I found that out, we were already like paycheck to paycheck. We were in the middle of like a maternity leave, another baby on the way. I was like, oh, I can't do this. There's no way. So I'm like, I'm going to refund and we'll just go on. Uh, but I, I walked upstairs and I still remember she was like in the fridge, you know, that, that in the fridge, checking out what's in there. She was in that position when I came up the stairs and she was like, how's your call, babe? And I'm like, this thing's actually like a, a big investment. It's like, it's, it's like over $10,000 to, to get started. And I don't know. I don't think, I don't think I'm going to do it. And in that moment, I'm like 95% checked out. I'm not doing this. There's no way we can afford this. And she gets up straight out of the fridge and she says, do you think you can do it? Again, pattern interrupt, right? And I'm like, I think I can. I'm wired. Like if I if if I want something, like I'm just going to relentlessly pursue after it until it happens. And she's like, Well, you have my support. So she brought me from 95% checked out. I'm not doing this to holy moly. Maybe I do have what it takes to do this. Because if she says in that moment in time, if she says to me, Babe, we can't do this. I'm like, I agree. And I, I'm I'm disconnecting. I never meet my my current business partners. I we don't build this amazing life that we've been able to build together. So I look at that as like a pivotal moment in time where the belief that she had in me when I didn't have it in myself, it just it like unlocked who I've become. Because back then I was 60 pounds heavier. I had never really worked on my personal development. I my finances were a mess. We were in debt, everything. In that moment in time, it's like it changed everything. It was like I took on the responsibility of I'm making this investment and I'm going to I'm going to just go until whatever we want to have in our life comes to fruition. That's actually a really extraordinary moment for all the reasons that you've said, Justin, but also Kaylee, you didn't say I believe in you. You didn't say, I think you can do it. You said, I mean, you did kind of imply, I believe in you, but what you said is, do you think you can do it? Which is such a different communication than I believe you can do it. It's a very eloquent difference that it's not just that Kaylee said yes, it's that she opened the door to your own yes, Justin. It's a magnificent moment. Okay, well, I'm so grateful. I think everything that each of you has said is super powerful and also all the things that aren't spoken that just come in your vibe and transmission, the way in which having such a fabulous marriage with four and six-year-old kids and full busy lives is just very uncomplicated and straightforward. Like that's part of the unspoken transmission in speaking with the two of you. And it's beautiful to witness. In fact, one of the reasons that I do these interviews is that we are all mammals. We learn through imitation primarily, especially when it comes to relationships. And most of us just really don't have great role models. So I'm just really grateful for the two of you stepping in to be role models, especially for couples with younger children. It's just beautiful. It's our pleasure. Um, and you said something there that I'd like to echo off of where you said we're mammals and we learn off of imitation. 
Uh, just, just to kind of dive back into what Kaylee said, where I was starting to work on myself and she yeah. wasn't in that zone yet. And of course I had the desire to be like, get on the train, like get on the bandwagon. We're doing, we're going to go and grow together here. Of course I wanted that. I was working on myself. What better than the, your wife jumping on board and doing it with you? But she wasn't there yet. And I remember distinctly, there was a podcast that I listened to where it was a Q&A episode. And the question that was asked was, it was like, how do I get my brother to lose weight? And then the answer from the host at the time was, you, like, you need to look at yourself in the mirror. Are you doing what you're asking of them to do? And then, because you can you can sit there and tell someone or ask someone all day to do something that you'd like to see them doing. But if you're not doing it yourself, how do you expect them to do it? And it really clicked for me where in, though my desire to continue to work on me actually went up in that moment, even though she wasn't along for the ride at that time, I took that advice to heart. And I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to show her what can happen when you do work on yourself. And it's going to naturally happen that she's like, I kind of want in on some of this. And that's exactly yeah. the way she put it a while ago. She was watching me develop in multiple ways in my life. And eventually she was the, the, the desire just started sparking naturally in her. So it, it, exactly what you just said, we're mammals and we learn by imitation. So if you are, if you want something, if you're a wife and you want your husband to do something, or you wish he was a certain way or vice versa, if you're a husband who wishes your wife was doing a certain thing or being a certain way, evaluate yourself first. Do you possess those qualities? Are you doing those things? that you wish they had, yes or no? And if the answer is no, then you ought to start with yourself and then naturally lead to show that person what's possible if they do that thing. I'm so happy you said that. You know, one of my most listened to episodes is called When Your Partner Isn't Into Personal Growth. And I completely agree with what you've said and just want to add that it's also very tempting to think personal growth looks a, one way for both of you. And it doesn't necessarily. And certainly, you know, for a wife getting annoyed that her husband doesn't go to yoga because yoga has been the thing that's opened her soul and changed her mindset, that sounds like the two of you have a lot of um, synergy in your growth. But it's not just the timing, it's also what the path actually is. It can be harmonious with someone else without needing in any way to be identical. So, I, I'm just echoing what you've said. I think it is such an important point. And for anyone who is approaching their marriage with personal responsibility and intentionality, this point comes up even when both people are devoted to personal growth. We don't improve at exactly the same level. Like sometimes one person's ahead and then it can be like, wait, I've been ahead for six months. How now I feel behind. I don't know if that comes up for the two of you, but but the whole trying to manage someone else's experience really is rarely helpful. And so I just very much appreciate that you've pointed to that. Yet, yeah, Yes, be the kind of person you want to be and let that be the invitation, not your critical words about it. Like there were some times when I was working on myself when she was she, she wasn't in that space yet that I, I felt a little bit of guilt. I felt like I was being selfish, but that advice was always at the forefront of my mind of like, I'm doing this for my family. And eventually like, this is who I am. So this is what I do. My identity had switched and I'm like, eventually she's gonna see and the desire is gonna happen. And it did, it, it, exactly what I envisioned came to life where now, we're both in that space where we both are constantly working on ourselves, our mindset, our fitness, our relationships, our communication, our finances, everything. We're both there. And like you said, they're very different. I listen to a very direct, aggressive <laughs> style podcast. She listens to a very soft, feminine <laughs> podcast. But like we're still tuning in and tapping into the like similar tools. It's just the, the path, like right down to the tangible details is very much so different. But I love that we're both in that that space of growth together. And we we just love, we we want to set an example for our children, right? And like one thing that I take pride in, a small example, every morning when I go to the gym, there are kids there, okay? Some parents bring their kids. It's a, it's a class style gym. 
And the kids kind of just hang out in the gym while their parents do the workout and they're on their iPads in the corner, killing time until mommy's done or daddy's done. Whenever I bring my daughter to the gym, six years old, she does a whole damn workout with me. <laughs> okay. She like it's to it. so like we as a couple are very cognizant of the fact that we got little eyeballs that are watching every single thing we do. And regardless of what we say, the instinct for those children is to do as they see, not as we say. So we try to set a very strong, great example of personal growth, health, communication, great parenting, what are, what a are real, what real love looks like for them, because that's probably what they're going to build themselves based on what they know. You warm my heart, Justin, because at one point when thinking of my career, when I was switching out of practicing medicine, I thought about doing something with children and for lots of reasons I won't go into right now, I just became so clear that actually the best thing that I can do for children is teach their parents how to have really fantastic relationships. So I'm working with couples and it's for the couples, but it's also for the children in just the way you've described. Just so magnificent. The ripple effect. Yes, uh, indeed. Yeah. And we like, I include, I try to like include them. We do a really great job of like, and if I don't know if we're going over here, but I want to just give one last example of a way to use intentionality. It was Kaylee's birthday last week, right? So I did like, you know, go buy a gift. Like, so I went and bought her a gift. The gift is irrelevant. The way that I did it is what really matters. So how does 99% of the world give a gift? They, you know, they're having a birthday dinner. Here's a wrapped box, unwrap it. Congratulations, there's a gift. One of the ways, very, very simple, but different and creates that moment for her is instead of just handing her the gift, I had the gift hidden in the house and I made her do a scavenger hunt. And every hint explains something that I love about her, right? So for example, I started off with like, you are the most beautiful woman I've ever laid my, my eyes on go to where you prepare your hair every morning. And as she goes to the bathroom where her straightener is, boom, there's the next clue. It's like, you are an incredible mother. Watching you tuck in her daughters melts my heart. Go to where you tuck in your oldest daughter. And then she went up to our oldest daughter's room. So I, I made her do a treasure hunt while also explaining to her why I love her so much and all the things that are amazing about her. And then she found her gift. And while we were doing this, our daughters were following us and they're so excited. for the scavenger hunt and they were reading along like this is how daddy speaks to mommy. So that's just a little thing where you can take a normal every day, every birthday thing of giving someone a gift, but just adding a moment to it. That also shows like, again, our daughters, they see the way that I did that for her. They read the words of how I describe her and how I think of her. It just creates a lasting impact. And it just, it, it shows a great example, in my opinion. It's so great. And I'm so enjoying how much compatibility you have in your family and I have in mine, because actually most recently for the holidays, our younger two boys who are 11 and 17, they created this extremely intricate scavenger hunt for us after having been the recipient, I haven't done one for my husband. My husband hasn't done one for me, but we've done them for the children many times. And then they did it for us. And it was so fun. There were some clues that we couldn't figure out because they were so sophisticated. So <laughs> I'm picturing, you know, go to where you tuck our youngest, our oldest daughter in bed. That's going to, that can get so much more sophisticated and engage them with that as well. I just, Oh, it's just beautiful. And um, we haven't gone over and we could keep talking, but we will wind it up. And I just am so grateful for the ways in which you've energetically opened the doors to your home and your life and allowed the rest of us to witness the beautiful things you create together. So thank you so much. Any last words from you, Kaylee? No, that was great. Thank you. It was yeah. fun. You're welcome. Any last words from you, Justin? I will say um, 
if you're a spouse in a marriage, it doesn't have to be difficult. It just boils down to being intentional with what you do. Don't just be that plastic bag in the wind. Put some thought and some intention and some awareness into your day-to-day life and how you can just create these little moments for your significant other. And, you know, we obviously know their love language. Um, but yeah, like play into that and just show love, show support in different unique little ways, show appreciation, whether that just be communicating it, whether it be a scavenger hunt, it doesn't have to be difficult. It just needs to be intentional. Yeah, it doesn't need to be difficult. It just needs to be intentional. Thank you both so much. Well, thanks Our for pleasure. having us.